guys, today I'm going to be doing my August favourites and empties and I don't actually have that many favourites. I have two favourites for the month um, and neither of them are beauty related at all. Um, so I don't really know what happened in August. I guess I haven't really been trying much. I've been back on a project pan and a pan that palette challenge which if you haven't seen those videos I'll leave them linked below so you can check them out if you're interested. But yeah, I haven't really been trying new things or doing anything different. I've kind of been sticking to the same product so I guess that's why I haven't had any favourites for this month. But on to my non-beauty favourites. And my first one is Grey by E.L. James. If you didn't know, this is Fifty Shades of Grey from Christian's point of view, which I am absolutely loving. I've got maybe 200 pages or so left to go in this. I have been obsessed with this book. I actually prefer this to Fifty Shades. I've kind of been reading them together um, because I was kind of late jumping onto the Fifty Shades bandwagon. It wasn't until after I'd seen the film that um, I wanted to read the books and I've only, I haven't finished the first one yet. What I've kind of been doing is reading a section of Fifty Shades and then getting to a good stopping point and then reading that same kind of section um, in grey because I love hearing story, like love stories from a guy's point of view. I love that with um, Twilight as well. When Stephanie Meyer came out with and kind of released part of Midnight Sun, I loved reading that story from Edward's point of view and kind of seeing what he was thinking and how he was feeling about things and I love that with grey as well. I'm really liking kind of reading the Fifty Shades from Anna's point of view and you know they'll be doing whatever and seeing how she's feeling about things and what she's thinking and you know she might kind of look at Christian and notice that he's giving her a funny look or she's wondering what he's thinking and then I can read the same section in grey and know what he's thinking and thinking and feeling so I really love kind of knowing love stories from the guy's point of view yeah definitely definitely been a favourite for this month my second favourite for August has been watching documentaries on Netflix. I've had Netflix for a while um, and I've watched these two that I'm going to mention. I've watched them a couple of times at least before but they're kind of my two favourite documentaries and I've been watching a whole load of them as well, kind of with a more health focus. Um, but the two that I have been absolutely obsessed with this month is Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead, which if you guys don't know, um, it's basically one man's kind of diary of his 60 day juice fast that he did. He kind of, he's an Australian and he kind of took a trip, travelled across America um, on this juice fast for his health and kind of talks about why he's doing it and you kind of see the differences in him, how he's feeling and then he also talks to various different people that he meets along the way and asks them kind of what they think about he healthy eating and dieting and juice fast and all that kind of thing. Um, and there's a couple of people that kind of join in with him along the way and it's really interesting to see how much of a difference juicing can make even uh, one woman does it I think she does a 10 day juice fast and the difference that it makes in her I'm really interested in that kind of thing I'm kind of starting to get more into um, healthy eating and kind of trying to detox my body a little bit and just I guess just generally eating a bit healthier and getting more of the good like fruits and veggies in my diet so that's definitely been the first one that I've loved and the second one is probably my all-time favorite um, documentary on Netflix which is Hungry for Change I love that one I've watched that one so many times and I watched it again recently and then wanted Ben to watch it with me so we watched it again and I just love it if you're interested in kind of health and the benefits of eating a healthy lifestyle, getting your veggies in, uh, superfoods, all that kind of thing. If you want to know kind of a bit more about why certain ingredients aren't quite so good for your body and what effects they might have, then I would definitely recommend Hungry for Change and Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead. They are fantastic. If I can, I'll leave them linked below. Um, but yeah, that's all of my favourites for the month. I know I don't have that many, so now I'm going to jump into my empties, which I do have quite a lot of. So firstly, I am very happy to say I've used up one of my Project Pan items already and it is the Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum Foundation. I am in the shade 52. I absolutely love this foundation. I've done a review on this, which if I can remember, I'll leave that link below as well. This is my all-time favourite foundation and it didn't take me as long to use up as I thought it was going to. This actually got used up pretty quickly, so very, very happy that this is out of my Project Pan and out of my collection now. Um, but I will at some point be repurchasing this because, like I said, it's my favourite. I love how it goes on the skin, how it looks. Um, it gives kind of a dewy finish without looking too glowy because I do have naturally quite oily skin anyway. It just, it's such a lovely foundation. Like I said, if you want to know more about it, I will leave my review linked below. But that is now out of my collection, but I will be repurchasing it. Next, I have a shampoo and conditioner. This is the Lee Stafford um, Breaking Hair Shampoo and Conditioner. I bought these when they were on, I think it was three for two or three for ten pounds, something like that in boots. Um, so I picked up the um, Bleach Blondes Hot Shots I think at the same time and I think I either did a review on here or on my blog or I've mentioned them at some point. Um, I really like those. These I liked when I first got them. They smell amazing. 
I love the scent of these. It's just kind of warm and it kind of reminds me of chestnuts. I don't know if it's got chestnuts in it, but it just kind of has that kind of warm, rich, oily, but good kind of oily um, scent to them. They smell really good and like I said, when I first tried them, I loved them. But I found after a while, with consistent use, they actually um, dried out my hair quite a bit. The I think that was more the shampoo than the conditioner. The conditioner was really nice. So I did really like the conditioner. The shampoo I did like, but it, they just together they just seemed to dry out my hair quite a bit. So I was glad to get these used up. I don't know if they really kind of did anything for reducing breakage at all. Um, I don't really think they did anything for that, but they were nice enough, but I probably wouldn't repurchase them just because um, they did dry my hair out. But I would be interested in trying out another kind of range from Lee Stafford in the future. Another hair care item I used up was the Redken Anti-Snap Treatment. I love this stuff. I've had this stuff for years. It's lasted me a really long time, and I haven't used it consistently. Um, I kind of used quite a bit when I first got it and then I moved away from it and then kind of over the years I've gone back to it and this stuff, I really do think this does something good for my hair. Um, I know nothing's going to kind of repair your split ends other than a trim but um, this stuff really does seem to do something good. It just makes my hair feel healthier, feel stronger. It's a protein treatment so it adds strength to the hair rather than moisture. Um, so you do have to be kind of careful and make sure you are using other hydrating products as well otherwise um, it can dry your hair out and make it brittle and snap off as opposed to doing what you wanted to do which is to prevent breakage but um, this is good for helping make your hair strong and it smells amazing. It lasts a long time like I said um, and it's just a leave-in treatment so I would use this after I had washed my hair, got out, towel dried, I would um, apply a pump, maybe two pumps through my hair, um, all over my hair from root to tip, um, kind of focusing on the ends mainly and just kind of leave that in and finish doing whatever else I need to do to my hair. This stuff I absolutely love, I will be repurchasing this at some point, not anytime soon because I am trying to save money at the moment but um, as and when I need a treatment and I can afford it I will be repurchasing this for sure. I used up the Vaseline Spray and Go Body Moisturiser. This is the um, like cocoa butter one. This is really nice. Um, it's not going to be the most moisturising, hydrating body lotion you'll ever use by a long shot. But in the summer months when you don't want that kind of heavy, sticky feeling from a really rich kind of buttercream, like body butter kind of um, body lotion, this is really nice. You literally can just spray it on in any direction. You can hold it upside down however you want. You can get everywhere with it. Um, and it sinks into your skin. I just kind of spray it all over, quickly rub it in with my hands and it's dry within seconds so you can straight away get dressed or go to bed or whatever you need to do. You don't have to worry about kind of waiting for it to sink into your skin before you can do anything and um, yeah it's just nice. It doesn't leave a sticky feeling. Like I said it doesn't particularly moisturize. It does moisturize but it's not going to be really moisturizing for your skin. So if you've got particularly dry skin then this isn't going to be the best thing but like I said on those days when you just want to quickly moisturize your body a little bit and get going this is really nice. I used up one of the little samples that I got in one of my My Little Beauty boxes. Um, this is the L'Occitane Rosa Riam. I'm probably butchering that name. It's just basically a hand and nail cream. Just a tiny little sample. It smells so strongly of roses and really kind of authentic rose scent as well. It's actually quite a nice scent. I'm not the biggest fan of rose scents but this I really liked and it does a really great job at moisturising my hands. I kept this on my desk at work um, just to moisturise my hands at work and um, yeah, it felt really nice, sink, sinks into your skin really quickly, and the scent lingers. I found that I would kind of obviously wash my hands, apply this, and then later in the day I would wash my hands again, and I could still smell this on my hands. The scent really does linger, so I really like that about this. If you don't like the scent, then obviously that's not going to be a good thing, but they do tons of different scents of these hand creams, so I'm sure you could find something that you did like. Um, yeah, really, really did like that product. I used up one of my Sentry Polishing Hot Cloth Cleansers. You guys know this is my favourite. I won't go on about this. If you want to know more, you can check out my blog. You can search on my channel. I have multiple blog posts and videos talking about this. Um, yeah, all-time favourite. Would definitely repurchase. I finished up the Beautycology Chocolate Cupcake Shower Cream. I actually used this as a bubble bath. These are not good for shower creams. They don't really lather up. They don't leave me feeling clean. Um, the scent's okay. It's quite synthetic, though. Um, yeah, not really the biggest fan of these. I got this in a set um, around Christmas time last year, I think. Might have even been the year before. I think it was last year though. Um, and used them up 
kind I kind of used some stuff I got rid of some other stuff because it just didn't seem to work um, I wouldn't really recommend these they're okay if you're on a really tight budget or um, maybe if, if you're younger and you're not too fussed about the products really doing anything but this just didn't really seem to do very much at all so wouldn't recommend that and will not be repurchasing I'm getting rid of my Clean and Clear Dual Action Moisturiser. I've had this for way too long, basically. Um, I've been having some breakouts kind of around my cheeks, my chin, everywhere, kind of. Um, and I went to use this the other day to help with that, and it just smelt off, so I'm going to be getting rid of it. But this is really good as a spot treatment. I used to use this, when I was younger, I used to use this as an all-over facial moisturiser, but as I've gotten older, it just seems to dry my skin out now. So instead, I got this little trick from Miss Budget Beauty. I use this as a spot treatment, so whenever I'd have any kind of spots, I put a doll of this on and go to bed leave it on overnight and it just really seemed to help with reducing how long I had the spots for and the size of them it just really seemed to help out with them so that's why I had that on hand and it was handy for that but obviously I don't tend to get that many spots so if you're not using it all the time it does sit around for quite a while and it can go off which is obviously what's happened in this case so that is that and then I just have two more empties um, I have this little sample of the what is this I think it's Garnier Moisture Match um, Facial Cream. This is the one for combination to oily skin. This is really nice. It has kind of like a, a strange gel kind of texture. It's almost like... I don't even know how to explain it, it just kind of feels like a bit bitty and when you apply it to your skin, you know when you like over rub moisturiser on and you get those little balls that roll up, it kind of feels like that as you're applying it, it's really strange um, and it's kind of like a matte gel but it's great for if you've got oily skin, it feels really hydrating without kind of being oily, it sinks into the skin really quickly, I really did like that um, and would potentially purchase this in the future but I've got a face cream that I'm really loving at the moment I actually have an, an updated skincare routine coming up um, I think that should be my next video going up so if you're interested to see what I'm using at the moment then make sure you check that out but that I did really like and um, my last empty is another little sample this is the Jo Malone uh, Dark Amber and Ginger Lily Cologne this smells lovely it's kind of a deeper more masculine kind of scent without being too masculine masculine <laughs> It just, yeah, it smells, I guess it's the amber, gives it that kind of like heady, deep scent. Um, it does smell really nice though, it just, over the summer and spring and things like that, it's kind of a bit too much, it's too intense, but as you start getting into the colder months, which we are starting to now, I posted up an Instagram picture today, and basically the forecast for the entire week is rain. So I guess summer is well and truly over, but this means that scents like this are going to start coming out a bit more for me. It does smell really nice. It just kind of makes me feel warm and cosy. It's that kind of scent. So they are all of my empties and my two favourites for the month. I hope you guys like this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you did. Make sure you check out all of my links below and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with all of my latest videos. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing my everyday makeup routine using my um, Project Pan items because I haven't done a makeup video in a while and I thought you guys might...